Two, one factor in quadratics. This is a continuation for students who want to see a few more examples. And it's typically done in grade nine or grade 10, depending um, how tough your teachers are, I guess. Now, in factoring quadratics, I have done a video which is actually pretty lengthy explaining the breakdown of both of these. So these situations, now this is a quadratic, so ax squared plus bx plus c, and there's two different cases. I'm going to show you, okay, so a link if you like, if you want to review, you can go back to that link up above there, and then it's going to give you a link to this if you want that as well. In this video, I'm going to just jump right into these examples and then show you how to approach them. First example, 6x squared minus 23x plus 20. When you're going to be trying to factor out any polynomials at all, one of the first steps you should try to do, it doesn't matter if it's quadratic or not, you should try to see if you can factor anything out to make these terms smaller. And what I mean by that is, can you take out an x or can you take out um, an actual coefficients okay, that are in common, which are a factor. Now, our coefficients here are 6, 23, and 20. Now, the problem is 23 is actually a prime number, so we can't factor out anything out of 23. So there won't be anything in common between 6, 23, and 20 that I can take out and factor to make that expression smaller. So unfortunately, I'm kind of stuck, which means now what do I do? Well, one of the first things that I'll try to do is I always work with these in terms of decomposition. Now, it's not always very easy to be able to see. And let's see if I can try to break this down. What I do is I take my A and then I take my C. I multiply these two numbers. So 6 times 20. I know this is going to give me 120. And I'm going to decompose this number, this negative 23 that I have here, into two numbers such that when I multiply them together, I'm going to get 120 out of it. And now what are those two numbers? So how can I decompose these? Um, now 120, I guess it's 10 times 12, right? Um, but 10 times 12, so if I add them or subtract them, I'm not really gonna get 23. So this one is a little tougher. Um, so what do I do? I mean, maybe you can see something. If I can't see it, then what I start doing is I start breaking these numbers down into their prime, okay, factorization. So six is really just two times three. 20 is two times 10, which really is two times two times five, which means that the prime factorization, and this is what it's going to be, this is gonna give me 120. That's what these are. And now I'm going to try to, oh, I can see here. So notice, okay, so I'm going to see. So if I take 8, all right, and then I multiply it by 15. So 8 times 15 is 120. And notice if I take negative 8, right, plus negative 15, that is actually negative 23, which is what I wanted. So I have decomposed that negative 23 into those two. Now what do I do? Well, I'm going to take this, so this is gonna be 6x squared, now it's minus 8x minus 15x, that was decomposed, plus 20. And now I just factor. And the way that I'm going to factor these is I'm going to group them. Now this is going to be one group right here. And what can I factor out of there? I can factor out, so the biggest thing I can factor I guess is 2x right there, and that's going to leave me 3x behind. And here it's going to leave me negative, I guess, 4. So that's the first one, and which means that my second one, because I'm going to have to be factoring this out, so it's going to be the same thing. This is 3x minus 4, and what does that mean? That means I have to factor out negative, and that's going to be 5. If I factor out the negative 5, indeed, because if I brought this inside, I would have got negative 15x, and I would have gotten plus 20. That is now factored out. And finally, well, you have now, so in terms of the full factorization, this would have been 3x minus 4 and 2x minus 5. That order of those don't, don't matter, 
but here is your factor form of that quadratic. And this is as good as it comes for this example. It's not an easy example because I actually didn't see you know, this right there. So notice breaking it down in terms of primes and then trying to see which one will match is sometimes useful. And that has helped me in this example. That's example number one. So again, what you do is, okay, you wanna be able to multiply your A times your C. In this case, we got 120. And then you wanna decompose that middle number. So you're gonna find two numbers when multiplied give you 120. And that was negative eight, negative 15. So the negatives cancel. And then when you add them together, well, the two negatives added gave me negative 23. And then I could factor this out. All right. Now, let's see, next example. This example right here, now this luckily, I'm gonna copy this. Now it has a Y, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to always be X. Now, this does not have a leading number, right? So it doesn't have an A, or at least A is equal to one. In that case, it's much simpler, because now what you're doing is, you're gonna take this last number, which is negative 36, and what you want is you want to find two numbers when added or subtracted together are going to give you five. So it's similar, but it's a little bit easier in this case. And in this, in this example, so notice it's negative. So that means one number is going to be negative. One is going to be positive. So let's see. So we have 36. And now if I think about it, okay, so I guess it's four and nine, because if I break this down, it's going to be 4 and 9. Notice it has to be positive, so that means this is positive, this is negative. Those are the two numbers, all right, when you're going to be negative 4 plus 9 is actually plus 5, which gives you this. And that means that this factoring is y minus 4 and y plus 9. We don't have to do exactly the same thing as above right here. You could because of the fact that the A, right, was equal to one. So this case is a little bit easier. And if you wanna recall this process, I'll put up a link up above, okay, when A is equal to one, um, to that video if you wanna see a little bit more on that. So that is the factoring process for this second example, and you can check. It's gonna give you this back when you distribute through, use the distributive property. Now, next example, this one right here, copy, let me paste it back down. And this one, unfortunately, probably won't be too easy uh, because I have a 10, 10 there. Now it's a Z, now it doesn't matter. It could be X or Y, so it's still a quadratic. Um, I can't factor out any number out of this because 11 is prime, so I'm stuck. So what do I do? Again, so I have to take these two numbers, so it's going to be 10 multiplied by negative 6, which in this case is going to give me negative 60. And I need two numbers when added um, or subtracted together are going to give me negative 11, and when multiplied are going to give me negative 60 right there. So what are two numbers? Does anything pop into my head? Um, so I guess, well, four times 15 is 60. And so that means, so this, if I break this down, so maybe I just got it. So four, 15 is 60 and we need negative. So this one's gonna be negative, this one's gonna be positive. That's what I have there. If you didn't see it again, I would have just simply started breaking this down. Two times five, this would have been two times three and then I would have been playing around trying to see. So notice the five and the three is 15, the two and the two is four, and that would have given me those numbers. That would have been the decomposition. Now in this case, okay, because the 10, the A is not equal to one, I do have to decompose that middle, which means I'm gonna have 10 Z squared, and now I'm gonna put, for example, four Z, and minus 15z, and the last thing is minus six. And now I'm going to factor these two things out. So you always factor this, and then you're gonna factor the second. So the first one, 
I guess we can factor out, so I guess we can only factor 2z out of here, which is going to be 5z. And what is what else is left there? This is going to be 2. Okay, so that means this other one has to be 5z plus 2 again. And that means I factored out a 3 out of here. That's correct. All right. And now we're going to take these, this out. We're going to factor it because it's common to both terms. And that means that I have 5z plus 2. And this is going to be 2z minus 3, which is left behind. And that is the factored form of that example. Now let's take a look at the last one in terms of factoring here. This one is not exactly a quadratic. Notice it has x to the power of 4. Let me copy this. I'll paste it here. And now, well, one of the first things that I see is in this case, again, I'm going to try to factor some, some things out. I certainly can factor out x because notice x squared is actually common to all of these. I'm going to factor out, so x squared out of here, out of here, and out of here. So that's going to be, that's going to help me for sure. It's going to make this smaller. And also the 6, 27, and 30, I know that 3 is a factor of those numbers. Um, and I think that's probably the largest factor that I have. So what would that leave me? That's going to leave me 2x squared plus now 3. So this is going to be, I guess, 9x. And this is going to be plus 10. And indeed, so I wouldn't be able to factor anything else out of here. But now what I've created is this whole thing is actually a quadratic. And this is just a factor of that, that polynomial in this case. So let's continue to try to factor this thing out. Once I have this, all right, so I can, so again, so 2 times 10 gives me 20. And I need two numbers. Okay, when multiplied um, together are going to give me 20 and when added or subtracted are going to give me plus 9. And that will be, um, why isn't it popping out at me right away? Okay, so this is going to be 2 times 2 times 5. Oh, I guess 4 and 5. All right, so I guess I can do this. So 4 and 5. Um, when I multiply, that gives me 20, and they're both positive because when I'm adding them together, I should get plus 9. All right, great. Now let's factor this thing. So 2x squared, so now I decompose, so 4x plus 5x plus 10. And now the first 2, so I'm going to take out the 2x out of there, which is going to give me just x plus 2 left. And here, this is going to be x plus 2, so I'm going to take out the 5. So 5 out of here, uh, 5x, and 10. Okay, perfect. That's what I have there. Now let's take out what's in common. I'm going to take out x plus 2. This is going to leave me 2x plus 5. And let's not forget, because we had this, 3x squared, so that's going to still be there. This is the factored form of that last example. So it has quite a few factors there. And we used those quadratics. Now, please keep in mind, you know, these quadratics, they don't always work out. I mean, you know, can you always have these and can you always find numbers? Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, it's not that easy. And you'll see examples in the future videos that I'll do um, where this method you might just bypass it because there is another method to try to do but it's worth knowing how to do these factoring of quadratics this technique is kind of neat it forces your your brain to follow an algorithm all right so thanks for watching we'll see you in a future video bye everybody cheers